ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jennifer Walker and you're watching the LMD. Today we're going to discuss a topic that has become very popular over the last few years. Clothing and fashion, a subject that is one of the most discussed nowadays. Because of the drop in garment prices over the last 20 years, we're able to consistently buy more and more clothes. We now own about five times more clothing than our grandparents have ever had. At first, this fact sounds impressive and amazing, but in reality, this mass production of clothes is accommodated to one single thing, sweatshops. We sent our journalist, Mrs. Barbara Waters, to explore the making of cheap fashion and the clothes that we buy every day from the store. Head to any fashion store around the world and you will find more stores than ever peddling cheap, trendy clothes. The average person now buys more individual clothing than ever before. It is all part of what has come to be known as fast fashion. This is a production system where fashion companies produce at low costs, high volume and incredibly high speed in terms of time of design to hitting the floor shop. If we investigate the production of the clothing we wear, we come to the same term every time, sweatshops. But what exactly is a sweatshop? A sweatshop is a crowded workplace with very poor, socially unacceptable or illegal working conditions. The major characteristics are long working hours, dangerous, challenging and underpaid to work. Every factory that violates two or more labor walls walls that pertain to the things like wages, benefits, working hours and the use of child labor can be labeled as a sweatshop. But who would actually work under oppressing conditions? These are often migrant workers with no bargaining power who are unaware of their legal rights as well, or just people from developing countries where the westernized working conditions have not been introduced. Such factories are mostly found in Central and South America, Asia, China and India. Hereby, the main reason for the invasion and use of sweatshops is the easy way for companies to gain profit by driving down the cost of production. An alternative would be the, to sell the clothing at a high price, which would lead to bankruptcy of the clothing brand due to the fierce competition in the industry. We are currently in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where around 2.5 million people work in thousands of factories. They make clothes for world worldwide brands like uh, Esprit, HM and Primark. Walking through the industrial district in Dhaka, we are meeting the 15-year-old Pooja. The little girl is a garment worker in Bangladesh for Adidas. Pooja, can you please describe your work day to me? My name is Pooja. During the day, we work in rooms which are simple as oven containers because of the heat. At night, the noise from the slums inhabitants, radios, televisions is deafening. It is very hard to work too. Can I ask you about your monthly earning? Of course, my monthly earnings are as little as 7 pounds. This is the equivalent of just 2 pence an hour. Complete families have to work here and I'm not the only child that works in this fabric. That's terrible. Can I ask you about the duration of your work day? 84 hours a week. My wages are so low that I struggle to provide for my family. My parents also work in this factory, but our total income is so low that we barely manage to survive. I am forced to work 12 hours a day on a regular basis. Also working throughout the night to finish an order is not unusual. Do you have some kind of rights? No, we were denied the right to access the workers' union. Several colleagues have been dismissed for trying to organize a union. Everyone is therefore very scared of making a move and fighting for rights, because we would end up on the streets with no food and money for our family. Do you experience physical as well as verbal abuse? Sadly, I do. I feel threatened and frightened at work. The management often acts brutally to meet large orders within a limited time, denying workers statutory rights such as holidays and a sick pay. A colleague of mine was physically attacked by a superior for not achieving the production target just yesterday. Besides that, my father didn't receive his wages because he had taken two days off to take my baby sister to hospital. It is horrifying. I can't believe it. Are you in good health then, considering the nerve-wracking circumstances? I suffer from a wide variety of health problems, coming from hearing diseases to skin diseases, 
caused not only by the dust and fibers, but also from the noise of the machines and the permanent stress. Thank you very much, Pooja, for your honest answers. As you can see, the workshop has in fact very poor conditions, unfair wages, unreasonable hours, child labor and lack of benefit, benefits for all the workers. So why are people like Pooja forced to work here in these horrible conditions? We have decided to find the answers of our question from the manager of this workshop. Hello, Mrs. Rodolf. We have just met a woman who works for this company and she told us all about her experience here. As we all know, you are the manager of this factory, so you should be able to answer all of our questions. Mrs. Waldorf, can you explain why these people are forced to work in these horrible conditions? Um, nice to meet you, was it Miss Waters? Um, okay, we are aware of the fact that our working conditions in the factories are not, how would you say, perfect. But you can't deny that our workers are getting paid in the end of the day. Uh, for the average Western laborer, this paycheck may seem a bit low. However, in other developed countries like Bangladesh, for example, this kind of work is paid relatively high. Here in Dhaka, many people are forced to make a living with a smaller salary, so our workers should feel lucky. Furthermore, our factory is um, very big and provides work for over 775 thousands of workers all over the world. So we are a very important source of employment for the people. Mrs. Your workers feel nothing but scared for their lives in their shift. Downstairs the workplace is, is terrible, but don't you think that's illegal? Firstly, um, I would like to point out that our factory has a um, strict labor code and is constantly monitoring wage levels and conditions to ensure a good working environment. Secondly, employees receive um, safety trainings as well as accident insurance. There's even an environmental management system in place and all of the needed materials for the productions are tested for harmful substances. In some of our factories, we also have well ventilated holes, as you can see. A majority of your workers are underage. Would you deny the fact that you are using child support, child support and group violating a very important class alone? Our workplace standards state that our suppliers must not employ children less than 15 or less than age for completing compulsory education, if that is, of course, higher than 15. In recent development, we also formed the Adidas Social Environment Affairs Program as a result of concerns of the burger of the presence of child labor in our global supply chains. And how would you explain the physical abuse in the factory then? From the stories we heard from your workers, many of them were abused. Uh, Miss Ward, are you sure these claims are completely false? When we don't support violence in any kind of way, I think we've made a mistake. We are a very peaceful community that provides work for people in need. So, if you would excuse me, I have plenty of work to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I assume that's the end of our interview. Moving on to you, Jen. Thank you so much, Barbara. Please stay safe and see you soon. It will be excessive to leave gaps of knowledge about the situation in sweatshops like this, so we decided to turn to the expo Dan park and find out the whole truth hiding behind sweatshops, if there are pros and cons or even solutions about the problem. He is invited to share his opinions on our show right now, Purzu. So please welcome him, ladies and gentlemen. Dan, can you hear us? Thank you very much, Jennifer, for inviting me. I hope I'll be able to provide the watchers of BLDM some insights on the controversial topic of sweatshops. In terms of recent developments, on the 24th of April 2013, an eight-story garment factory called Rana Plaza in Dhaka, Bangladesh collapsed because of a structural failure. The search for the deaths ended after 19 days with a death toll of 1,134. 
approximately 2,500 people were injured. It is considered the deadliest structural failure in modern human history. However, this was not just a horrifying accident. Apartments and several other shops on the lower flo floors of the building were immediately evacuated after cracks in the building was, were discovered. But the building's owners ignored warnings and forced the garment workers to return to work, saying they would otherwise cut their salary. The building collapsed during the morning rush hour. Additionally to the owner's ignorance, the building itself was never actually designed to be a factory, and another three floors were built illegally, making the building extremely insecure. Nevertheless, the whole incident finally raised awareness on the issue of sweatshops and made the problem even clearer to the public. Furthermore, a week after the collapse, a new accord on factory and building safety in Bangladesh was created. Some of the most notable agreements were ensuring the safety of workers in garment factories, as well as providing more transparency through, for example, publishing inspection reports. Plaza with a market and several clothing factories inside. During morning rush hour, it simply collapsed. Officials discovered cracks in the building yesterday, but workers say they had no choice but to go in. Moreover, a new study from 2016 has found that the United Nations Back program Better Work, founded in 2007, aiming to improve the working conditions of workers in garment factories across developing countries, among which are Bangladesh, Jordan and Vietnam, has shown significant gains in both quality of life for workers and profitability for businesses. The program has not only improved workers' rights, but also, for example, made significant progress in closing the gender pay gap in garment factories. Better work in many other NGOs, like the National Labor Committee, are continuously working on protecting workers' rights in developing countries. However, we often neglect the power we hold as individuals and as customers in such matters. Every one of us can also help in the fight against unfair treatment of workers in developing countries. You can, for example, buy your clothes from local or secondhand shops and thus not support big brands like H&M or Tommy Hilfiger who make, us, who make use of cheap labor. What you can also do is buy union made or fair trade clothing. Any kinds of products bearing the fair trade certified label are made by laborers working in healthy conditions and receiving fair wages. Furthermore, raising awareness on the topic and making others more mindful about their consumer behavior would also help enormously. Change comes from all of us. That was very informative, Dan. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. With that being said, we are ending today's report on the topic of sweatshops and we will see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock on the Ia and channel. Make sure you stay tuned for the weather program right after and have a pleasant evening. Thank you so much.